When we picture a Viking longhouse, we often imagine a roaring fire in the center, with warriors gathered around, sharing stories and ale. This image is certainly true, but it doesn't tell the whole story of how these remarkable people survived the harsh, unforgiving Scandinavian winters. Relying solely on an open fire for warmth was incredibly inefficient and dangerous. A fire consumes a massive amount of wood, a resource that required significant effort to gather, chop and dry, especially when the landscape was blanketed in snow. Constant wood gathering was a drain on a community's time and energy, resources that were better spent on farming, crafting, or defending the settlement. Furthermore, an open fire produces a great deal of smoke. While longhouses had openings in the roof to let smoke escape, these smoke holes also allowed precious warm air to rush out, creating a constant, chilly draft. The air inside a longhouse could become thick and difficult to breathe, posing a real health risk to its inhabitants, especially children and the elderly. The danger of an unattended fire spreading was also a constant threat, in a structure built almost entirely of wood, thatch, and turf. A single stray spark could lead to a catastrophic blaze, destroying a family's home and all their possessions in a matter of minutes. The Vikings needed something more reliable, safer, and more efficient. This pressing need for a better heating solution forced the Vikings to become incredibly innovative engineers. They weren't just warriors and raiders, they were practical builders and keen observers of the natural world. They understood the fundamental principles of heat transfer and insulation long before the formal language of physics existed to describe them. They realized that the key wasn't just to produce heat, but to capture it, store it, and release it slowly over a long period. This thinking shifted their focus from the fire itself to the entire structure of the longhouse, particularly the ground beneath their feet, turning their homes into giant slow-release heating systems. The challenge was immense. Winters in the north were long, dark and brutally cold, with temperatures frequently dropping far below freezing. To survive and thrive, a Viking family needed a home that could remain a safe and warm sanctuary for months on end. Simply burning more wood was not a sustainable or practical answer. The solution they developed was a sophisticated multi-part system that integrated the floor, the walls, and the hearth. It was a testament to their resourcefulness and their deep understanding of their environment, a system that allowed them to create comfortable living spaces even in the face of the harshest Nordic climate. The true genius of the Viking heating system began with the floor. Instead of simple dirt floors, archaeological evidence reveals a much more complex and intentional design. The Vikings essentially built a thermal battery right into the foundation of their homes. This process started by digging down and creating a layered or stratified floor. The bottom layer often consisted of tightly packed sand or gravel, which provided a stable and well-draining base. This was a crucial first step, as it prevented moisture from the cold ground from seeping up into the living space, which would have made the home damp and much harder to heat effectively. On top of this base layer, the Vikings would add a thick layer of clay mixed with straw or animal hair. This clay mixture was incredibly dense and acted as the primary component of their thermal mass. During the day, as the central hearth burned brightly to cook meals and provide light, it radiated heat in all directions. This heat didn't just warm the air, it was absorbed deep into the dense clay floor. The floor acted like a sponge for thermal energy, slowly soaking up the warmth from the fire and storing it within its packed, earthen layers for many hours. This stored heat was the secret to surviving the long, cold nights. After the main fire was reduced to smoldering embers to save fuel and reduce smoke, the floor began its work. The vast warm mass of the clay slowly and gently radiated its stored heat back up into the living space. This created a consistent, radiant warmth from below, a far more comfortable and efficient method than the fluctuating heat from a fire alone. It was a form of underfloor heating, powered by the day's fire. This system kept the ambient temperature inside the longhouse stable and bearable throughout the night, without needing to constantly feed the flames. The construction of these floors was a communal effort and a carefully honed skill. The right consistency of the clay, the proper thickness of the layers, and the technique for packing it all down tightly were bits of knowledge passed down through generations. Sometimes, flat stones or wooden planks were placed over the clay in high traffic areas, but the core principle remained the same. The floor was not just something to walk on, it was an active and essential part 
of the home's climate control system, a silent earthen engine that provided warmth and comfort when it was needed most. Creating and storing heat was only half the battle. The Vikings also had to be masters of keeping that precious warmth inside their longhouses. Their understanding of airflow or draft management was remarkable for its time. The primary ventilation point in a longhouse was the smoke hole, or leisure, in the roof directly above the central hearth. While its main purpose was to let smoke out, it was also a major source of heat loss. To manage this, the Vikings likely used a cover made of wood or stretched animal hide that could be adjusted with a long pole, allowing them to control the size of the opening. This simple mechanism gave them precise control over the building's ventilation. During the day when the fire was large and smoky from cooking, the smoke hole would be opened wide to ensure the air remained clear. But as evening approached and the fire was banked down to embers, the opening could be partially closed. This reduced the amount of warm air escaping, while still allowing the minimal smoke from the embers to vent. It was a delicate balance. Closing it too much would fill the house with dangerous carbon monoxide, but leaving it too open would let all the stored heat from the floor and hearthstones vanish into the cold night sky. The long, low shape of the long house itself played a role in managing airflow. With doors typically located at either end of the structure, the Vikings could control cross drafts. In winter, they likely used heavy curtains made of wool or animal hides over the doorways to block drafts when people entered or exited. They understood that cold air sinks, so by keeping openings sealed near the floor, they could prevent chilly air from rushing in and displacing the warmer air that naturally rose towards the ceiling. The low sloping roofs, often covered in thick turf, also helped as the warm air would pool in the upper parts of the house before slowly exiting through the managed smoke hole. This careful management of drafts was an active daily task. It required constant attention and an intuitive feel for the building's breathing. Someone had to be responsible for adjusting the smoke hole cover based on the size of the fire, the direction of the wind, and the temperature outside. It was not a passive set it and forget it system. This hands-on approach shows that Viking home life was deeply connected to the building itself. They didn't just live in their houses, they operated them, fine-tuning the environment for maximum comfort and efficiency through these simple but highly effective techniques of airflow control. The central hearth, known in Old Norse as the Arin, was the furnace at the heart of the longhouse's heating system. It was more than just a pit for a fire, it was a carefully constructed thermal device. The hearth was almost always surrounded by a ring of large, dense stones. These stones were not chosen at random. The Vikings selected specific types of rock, like soapstone or other dense field stones, known for their excellent ability to absorb and retain heat. These stones served the same purpose as the earthen floor, but on a more concentrated and intense scale, acting as a secondary heat battery right at the source. As the fire burned throughout the day, these massive hearthstones would become incredibly hot, absorbing a tremendous amount of thermal energy. They effectively captured heat that would have otherwise been lost up through the smoke hole. After the fire died down for the night, the stones would continue to radiate this stored heat for many hours. Anyone sitting or sleeping near the hearth would feel a pleasant, steady warmth emanating from the stones, much like sitting next to a modern radiator. This effect dramatically increased the efficiency of the fire, ensuring that every piece of wood burned contributed its energy not just for immediate warmth, but for long-lasting, stored heat. This radiating effect turned the middle of the longhouse into the warmest and most desirable living area. It created a microclimate within the larger space, a cozy core where the family could gather in the evenings. The heat from the stones, combined with the radiant warmth rising from the floor, made the center of the room comfortable even as the areas near the outer walls grew colder. This strategic use of thermal mass meant that the Vikings could heat the most important parts of their home without having to expend the fuel necessary to keep the entire voluminous space at a high temperature. Furthermore, the hot stones served multiple practical purposes beyond just ambient heating. They could be used for cooking long after the flames were gone, allowing pots of stew to simmer slowly overnight. Water could be heated by placing containers near them, and wet clothes or boots could be dried much more effectively than by hanging them in the smoky air. The hearthstones were a multifunctional utility at the center of Viking domestic life, providing heat, cooking power, and a warm, comforting presence that made the longhouse a true home through the darkest and coldest months of the year. 
The ingenuity of the Viking heating system offers profound lessons for us today, especially for those interested in sustainable living, off-grid construction, and low-impact building. The core principle of using thermal mass to store heat is a cornerstone of modern passive solar design. The Viking Longhouse demonstrates that you don't need complex technology or expensive materials to create a home that works with its environment. By using locally sourced natural materials like earth, clay, and stone, they built structures that were both highly efficient and deeply sustainable. This is a powerful reminder for modern builders to look to the land around them for solutions. Modern off-grid homes and simple cabins can directly apply these ancient techniques. Instead of a simple concrete slab, a builder could design a layered earthen floor or a rubble trench foundation filled with stone to create a thermal battery, surrounding a wood stove or fireplace with a significant mass of stone or cob. A mixture of clay, sand, and straw can replicate the effect of the Viking hearthstones. This simple addition can capture the intense heat from the fire and radiate it back into the room for hours after the fire has gone out, drastically reducing wood consumption and creating a more stable indoor temperature. The Viking approach also highlights the importance of active participation in managing a home's climate. Their system of adjusting smoke hole covers and door curtains reminds us that a house is not just a passive shelter, but a system to be operated. In a modern context, this could mean manually opening and closing insulated curtains over windows to manage solar gain or adjusting vents to control airflow based on the time of day and the season. This hands-on mindful approach fosters a deeper connection with our living spaces and a greater awareness of energy use moving away from the dependency on automated, energy-intensive thermostats. Ultimately, the Viking Longhouse stands as a testament to the power of practical engineering and clever design. These were not primitive people living in smoky huts, they were sophisticated builders who understood thermodynamics in a deeply intuitive way. They show us that resilience and comfort can be achieved through smart design rather than high technology. For anyone looking to build a simple, efficient, and self-sufficient home, the lessons from the Viking hearth are as relevant today as they were a thousand years ago. Work with nature, store your energy, and build with wisdom.